We live in a 3D world. Nowadays, many applications are based on the 3D content. People are familiar with these concepts already, but most of the 3D data are still drawn by professional engineers and designers by hand, which are not enough to supply the increasing requests of the high-quality 3D models, and the cost is pretty high. The 3D scanning technology helps people store the physical world into 3D contents information in an easy and efficient way. Shannon 3D focuses on the development of high-quality 3D digital technologies, make the high-tech accessible to more users by offering the end-to-end -end solution at a reasonable cost. Our first product is a 3D camera. That was 16 years ago. The original idea was to manufacture it into a physical object. The research and development focus on the development of robust software and hardware modules, which can be applied in many of our products. On top of them, we have the product R&D team. They focus on the product development based on the requirements and feedbacks of our users. For Shine 3D, we offer the multiple technologies, including the handheld laser scanner, structure light scanner. We also have the robotic arms with the scanner to complete the whole solution from 3D scanning to inspection just by one click. In most cases, one product print needs one customized 3D data which generates large requests for economic and efficient 3D modeling technology. That's why the integrated 3D scanning design printing solution is the key to popularization of customized products and services offering. Besides the hardware, we also cooperated with the software partners like 3D Systems for offering their design software Geometric Design X and Control X to complete the whole workflow for the customers. For them, to buy the 3D scanning system is an essential investment and tools for them, which can help them to highly improve their working efficiency, reduce the waste, and also can uh, ensure a high quality control. The main applications for Shining 3D in the industrial sector are quality control or reverse engineering. Quality control combined with a 3D scanner means non-contact inspection. It's way faster and you get way more details compared to a um, CMM machine, so it's better compared to the traditional methods if you want to gain more data itself of the object you want to inspect. Reverse engineering is a little bit different compared to quality control. Most of the time you have like a non-standard um, or broken part and you will scan it and reverse it back to original CAD file to reproduce it. For example, we help our aerospace customers to detect um, dents in their planes. The high quality 3D model can be used for many purposes, like uh, design, AR and VR and so on. 不少用户都希望扫描仪有一定的精度 since the release of this oral scan, um, we granted access to a much broader uh, field of, of customers who can now benefit from uh, 3D scanning the mouth of the patients, for example. We are offering to dental technicians and dentists all over the world is a complete and integrated solution 
with our 3D scanners and 3D printers connected to the most competitive CAD software in the market, we are able to um, accompany the full 3D workflow from the acquisition of the actual clinical situation of the patient through the planning and design of the restoration in the software up to the final production of the prosthetic tool for the completion of the treatment. Prothese ist ein unterstützendes Organ, das ein Körperteil stützt oder ein gewisses Wachstum einschränkt etc. oder lenkt. Das kann alles Mögliche sein. Wir drucken seit circa dreieinhalb Jahren äh, orthopädietechnische Hilfsmittel, Individualhilfsmittel aus dem 3D-Drucker und sind in diesem Kontext äh, auf die Problematik gestoßen, dass wir die Sanitätshäuser enablen müssen, dass sie digitale Datenerfassung machen können. Das Handling vom 1Scan Pro 2X und dem Vorgängermodell wir zusammen ähm, war sehr selbsterklärend. Wenn die Orthese druckbereit ist, also wenn die komplette Konstruktion erstellt ist, dann wird sie nochmal final mit dem Orthopädietechniker abgeglichen, meistens mit äh, Sharing Tools am PC, am Telefon. Also es passiert alles aus der Ferne. Techniker konfektioniert das Produkt dann komplett zusammen, bringt Gurte an, äh, sichtet es auch und hat dann die tatsächliche Übergabe an Patienten, äh, nimmt er vor. Also er macht eine finale Passfit-Kontrolle, er schaut, ob die Gurte und alle Punkte, die er ausgewählt hat, richtig gewählt worden sind. Und erst dann ist es ein Medizinprodukt, weil der, dann ist es zum Kunden übergeben worden. When we look at the developments of the past years, we are observing a huge growth of the adoption of 3D scanning and 3D printing technologies in dental clinics and dental labs all over the world. 3D digital dentistry is a key part uh, which can be adopted in clinics and labs alike. The reason why we maintain the industrial leader is that we focus on the innovation based on our customers' actual requirements and the popularize the applications of the digital technologies, make it accessible to more people by offering the end-to-end -end solution at a reasonable cost. Okay. Okay, so as introduced in the video, Shiny 3D is specialized in 3D digitizing, and we have experience for over 17 years. We have a 3D digitizing technology system solution from 3D scan to intelligent design to 3D print. Our headquarters is located in Hangzhou, China, and we also have two subsidiaries in Germany and USA, which have both sales and technical team to offer best support to local customers. Uh, just to check, can you hear my voice clearly? Unless there's anything not clear, I, I can slow down or I can explain more. It's okay. No worry on that. Yeah. Okay. So among all the products developed by Shiny 3D, iScan Series 3D scanners have built a good reputation worldwide with its high quality and affordable price, which enable customers to get 3D data efficiently for further applications. So from uh, 2015, when we launched the first iScan scanner, we have been developing new scanners every year and making improvements to the existing products. Currently, we have six scanners available each scanner with its specific advantage. And I will introduce the scanners from iScan HX. 
We could say it's the most powerful scanner among eye scan series. With blue laser and LED hybrid light source, it's able to scan dark or reflective surface directly, suitable to scan both automotive parts and full car body, as well as other metal parts. The accuracy is up to 0.04 millimeter. Let's say the demo video to see how it works. industry, iScanHX can really be a very helpful tool for you. And we'll share more case studies later. So iScanH looks similar to the HX we just say in the video. This scanner is mainly designed to scan human body and big objects suitable for healthcare, customization, virtual display, art and heritage applications. With this large scan frame, it's able to get scan data rapidly and fluently. Also, we have a video of Einstein H to scan arm. HD and 2X 2020 are multifunctional scanner that can work as both handheld 3D scanner as well as fixed 3D scanner with tripod and turntable. It's able to scan objects from three centimeter to three meter and get impressive high detail. The main difference between them is that the HD can scan faster and more fluently than 2X 2020. Also, we have a video to see how it works.
it's linked. Things stuck for a while. Okay. We can play maybe. Um, and never mind, I can share the video link with you later. And we can uh, check the Einstein SE and SP desktop 3D scanners first. It's a um, very uh, good um, tool for entry level user with easy operation, user friendly workflow, and faster scanning. Both are able to export STL file to 3D print directly. And it's suitable for students, designers, and engineers. With our continuous development, shiny 3D iScan theory 3D scanners have served tens of thousands of customers worldwide. Here we list some of our clients and partners that you may have heard about. So they are from different industries, aerospace, automotive, electrical, IT, healthcare, education, and so on. Education has always been a target market for iScan, as we aim to offer user-friendly and powerful scanning and design solution to both students and teachers. I noticed that many guests here are from universities. Have anyone heard about World Skills Competition? Yeah, it's the um. World Skills Competition is held every two years and pits the brightest and best young people from all around the world into an education and vocational competitive environment. Shiny 3D iScan Pro Series Scanner is selected for mechanical engineering CAD program for high quality 3D modeling. In addition to providing exams and scoring standards, we also provide resource packages for intensive training and skill evaluation reports for the competitors. iScan is also used for digital archive and teaching. Uh, University of Michigan Medical School is our customer from USA. They use iScan Pro to scan different parts of human bones and organs for uh, digital archive and teaching. They can mark specific parts of the scan data with academic name so that students can know clearly where is the part and where is its location. In Sierra Leone, a West African country, 3D lab of a university and hospital work together to help local people. 
get the scan data of the patient's body to design customized medical aids for them, including artificial legs and arms. This opened the door back to the society for the amputees and helped them regain confidence. Every time when I see such cases, I feel 3D scanning is really meaningful in improving human lives. So uh, this case is from OT4 from Germany. They also use this eye scan for orthotics customization. Compared to the previous method, the imprints were made manually with plaster bandages taken directly on the patient's skin. With the new method of 3D scanning, the imprints can be captured with high detail more efficiently. Meanwhile, patient stress is reduced significantly. Automotive customization is also a popular market for eye scan. Yeah, we can even scan this huge um, file track. So Rosenbar is from Germany. It's the world's leading manufacturer of systems for file fighting and disaster protection. They visited Shiny 3D for a solution to scan various parts of the file track to obtain authentic and precise 3D data of the objects. The lightweight of the iScan Pro HD and the capacities of dark objects capturing enable a fast and uncomplicated data acquisition of the driver's cabin with great results, which are perfectly suitable for rendering in key shots and tailoring products on client requests. So in addition to part customization, iScan can also handle huge projects to modify a mobile home. This company is our customer from Vietnam. They use iScan Pro 2X to scan the interior of the Ford Transit to get accurate dimension of each part and design suitable parts to modify the car to a mobile home. It greatly shortened the time of the whole process compared to traditional methods. iScan also plays an important role in design and innovation. But this is an uh, interesting case from Germany. Founded in 1993, Schneider and Hammer have specialized in traditional goldsmithing for over 25 years. And they always have a dream to create jewelry that mimics the nature. The surface of trees, rocks, and other naturally occurring shapes would make for unique pieces. But doing these designs using traditional methods proved to be too difficult. So after much research, they made the decision to purchase iScan. They take the scanner outdoors to scan the tree. Yeah, we also have a power bank to support scanning outdoors. So they scan the tree and quickly getting the data within a few minutes. The final scan model is rich in detail. Yeah, we can see every detail of the tree. And then the data can be imported to Rhino 3D software and readjust the data and fit into a ring accordingly. I see Susan is taking a picture. <laughs> I can share these slides with you. <laughs> Do you like the ring? Yeah, eye scan users are always more creative than we can imagine. So make a tree 3D from USA 
they used iScan Pro to design a really cool dashboard. They scanned the original dashboard of the motorcycle, redesign and create a dashboard cover in the shape of skeleton mask through 3D printing technology. Does that look cool? And our another user from Hong Kong, he also used iScan Pro 2X Plus to scan a motorcycle. He get the scan data of the old fashioned motorcycles for the design and production of miniature model kits. So thanks to iScan, 3D data acquisition is much more convenient and accurate than ever. Also in the special time of pandemic, Eight Group, our partner in Colombia, made their efforts with iScan to help doctors in the country. They scanned goggles and redesigned with Geomagic Design X and then 3D printed to deal with the shortage of goggles. iScan is also a helpful tool for art and heritage. So, Cooperating with my mini factory in UK, we launched the program of Scan the World and sponsored with iScan Pro series. It's an initiative that is creating a digital archive of sculptures, landmarks, and monuments from around the world using 3D scanning and printing technology so that people can admire the sculptures worldwide without going out of home. In Taiwan, uh, iScan helped Art Center Music Hall to save and share the beauty of historical music instruments. So Kilian Designs, our um, reseller and partner in Taiwan, they went to the Taiwan Art Center Music Hall to scan these historical music instruments for them. Anyone knows this, the name of the instruments? Maybe a little bit. Um, special. The first one is a uh, Philippine drum, and the second one is a uh, Samose from Japan. We turn the uh, 3D objects, we turn the uh, real object to 3D scan data so that we can share online with all the customers. And we also have the Burmese harp from Cambodia and also the Thai xylophone. Okay, uh, this is my sharing of uh, Einscan theory 3D scanner and our application. And uh, we are willing to share more with you if you are interested. And I can send all the links of the videos Oh, All right, uh, let's get started for the technical part of this day's webinar. So, uh, let me introduce myself first. Um, I am, my name is Lee Hao Wu, and I'm an application engineer uh, for Chinese 3D. And today, uh, we will be talking about reverse engineering with uh, both scanner and two software called Geometric Essentials and Solo H. Um, this will be a brief introduction uh, to the reverse engineering process using uh, scanners and the software as I mentioned. But if you are interested in the further learning uh, of reverse engineering, uh, we have more videos in detail about how these two software works uh, and how the scanning works on our YouTube channel. You can just go search for Shiny 3D and you can find a lot of useful uh, videos, tutorial videos there. Okay, so let's get it started. Uh, we'll be starting from 
one short video. So this is a pretty short video uh, for, for you to have an idea on how the scanner and the, the two software can work together to get you uh, from a real object to a CAD model of this uh, metal pieces. Um, we will talk more about uh, the details later and now let's get us started with uh, one question, which is what is reverse engineering? Um, many of you guys uh, may already have an idea of how this works or um, at least what reverse engineering can get us, but still there are people uh, have no idea about reverse engineering at all. Um, reverse engineering itself is kind of, a large idea and has a long history. Um, we have been doing reverse engineering for for a long time. Like for example, during uh, World War II, uh, Soviet Union has been reverse engineering the the B twenty nine bomber uh, from US. Um, however, at that time, uh, it took a long time uh, with many talents to make this projects to real. But today. Uh, we can do reverse centering more efficiently. Okay, here we have a chat um, for to help you to get more idea of how the basic reverse engineering process looks like. So uh, everything will start from a design. Okay, so you have an idea in your mind, and you do forward design uh, to to get the CAD file to to get a digital copy of uh, the of your product design. Then you do manufacturing based on the CAD file to get the real object. Um, next step is where uh, the reverse engineering will start it. So usually uh, for many different purposes, uh, we want to get a copy of this CAD file. And the first step we're gonna scanning the real object. 
uh, to get the mesh file. You can see on the screen that uh, the mesh file is kind of a little bit off comparing to the real object because there are arrows during the scanning. Then the next step, uh, we will import the mesh file into, into the software. Uh, then we're gonna mesh features to get an initial mod model. Um, during this steps, um, the Dan pada waktu kita pakai, uh, laser itu kita ada tiga macam, red, green, dan blue. Jadi kok ya pas ya, red, green, oh. blue, cukup warna juga sama, red, green, blue. Nah, red itu yang paling rendah, green itu yang di tengah-tengah, blue itu yang paling tinggi. Nah, jadi kan dia tanya tuh, kenapa kok, apa, dia cerita kan, kenapa bisa bikin, apa namanya, um, Kenapa bisa scan barang gelap, barang apa namanya, barang kilap dan segala macam? Itu karena blue laser. Jadi blue laser itu yang wavelengthnya paling cocok buat untuk anu apa untuk akurasi. Nah, cuman kalau untuk barang besar, uh, kalau udah besar sekali ya, makanya kenapa metrologi banyak yang pakainya green. Kalau red itu jarang sih, jarang pakai karena dia nggak terlalu anu apa, nggak terlalu bagus resolusinya. Oh ini lihaunya jarang lagi ya? Lihau, oh, oke? Okay? No, he still restart acting. Oh, I don't know, he's, he's not respond. Maybe he's restart. How come he's still on but not? Yes, on. the picture is. Changing, but the person is missing. No sound. Yeah. I yeah. hope you hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Jadi memang ceritanya gitu. Apa namanya? Um, kebanyakan ya kita kalau lihat uh, laser scanner. Laser scanner itu kan levelnya yang paling tinggi ya. Apalagi kalau apa namanya? Um, kalau masuk ke engineering harus masuk ke anu ya. Um, harus ngecek bahwa barangnya cocok apa enggak dengan yang dibikin atau kita mau bikin apa namanya um, reverse tapi yang ukuran menentukan gitu ya. Ah ini lihat kali. Lihat you there? Oke, okay. uh, I think is an internet problem. Update OS. <laughs> How do you know? No no, it just uh... Pak Fadil se. Oh, Pak Ibadi. Pengalaman ya, Pak. <laughs> Jadi okay. gitu ya. Di lapangan bahwa memang memang ada beberapa proses pada waktu kita harus melakukan di anu apa namanya? melakukan scanning. Nah, kalau kita lihat produknya mereka, ini uh, scanner shining yang lagi yang ditunjukkan ke kita itu adalah level Anu apa namanya level general scanning ya jadi uh, general scanning itu memang banyak modelnya ya nah cuma tinggal ter, uh, tergantung uh, mereka mau mainnya apa nah jadi laser pointer lebih hijau lebih terang dan menyali, menyilaukan iya memang benar <laughs> oke okay. he start to how you start again can you talk I, I still cannot hear you. Maybe the cable is. Yeah. Uh, can you hear ah, me now? Yes. Yeah, yeah we can hear. All right. <laughs> Seems come back now. Okay, okay. So, uh, where have we left here? Yes, yes that, that one. that's the one. The basic process of reverse engineering. Okay, let's um, let's start from this uh, cases we want to share uh, to repair the this pair of glasses. So um, it's okay now. Yeah. Okay, let's get it started. So I want to use uh, this small case to to show you why uh, we want to use scanner for reverse engineering
So here we have a broken pair of glasses. Um, the, the middle metal piece is snapped and thinks there's no uh, spare parts available on shelf. Uh, the only way to repair it is to do reverse engineering and uh, get a to manufacture a replicate part of this middle metal piece. And why I said it's more efficient and accurate, you can uh, compare uh, the old ways with uh, scanning process. So the old way we're going to do this is we first going to measure the part. Um, you will use Hello, Pak. Ini internetnya putus lagi ya? Pak? Iya, internetnya mungkin ya stabil. Tadi Pak Par cari saya kenapa itu? Lucunya kalau putus kok anunya masih ada ya? Apa? Ya, gambarnya ada orangnya, nggak ada suaranya. Apa kabelnya yang putus? Wah, nggak jelas. Oh. Bet, mari kita balik lagi ke pembicaraan. <laughs> <laughs> um, jadi memang, apa namanya, barangnya dia paling kecil, yang SESP itu, itu yang adalah kita sebut namanya entry level scanner. Jadi kebanyakan untuk nge-scan barang-barang kecil, ya barang-barang kecil itu tapi ya nggak kecil-kecil banget sih. Biasanya rata-ratanya di 20 apa namanya 20 kali 20 cm, range-range segitu dan uh, barangnya juga nggak uh, bisa berat-berat ya. Kalau dilihat itu kan ada turntablenya tuh. Nah turntablenya itu dia barangnya nggak uh, lebih dari 5 kilo. Ya 5 kilo itu sudah berat kalau untuk buat turntablenya muter aja kagak, kagak bisa kali. Nah, jadi um, makanya tadi dia kasih contoh adalah salah satu penggunaannya di world skill. Di world skill itu ada satu kelas engineering uh, apa namanya, di mana mahasiswa itu harus bukan mahasiswa ya siswa sekolah. Um, kebanyakan kan vocational school kalau world skill siswa sekolah itu harus uh, melakukan proses reverse engineering. Jadi mereka dikasih part. The Bluetooth device is really too pale. Oh, radio mode up. Huh? Aux input mode up. Who's that? I no idea. <laughs> Jadi itu di level tengah. Nah pada pada waktu kita naik ke atas, HX itu yang end scan itu itu lebih banyak ngob, apa, ngomong tentang print uh, scanner untuk barang-barang uh, besar. Ya, jadi produk-produk besar atau manusia. Jadi ini uh, dia hybrid karena dia ada infrared anunya, ada infrarednya. Jadi bisa scan uh, manusia. Kenapa kok bagus buat manusia? Karena pada waktu mode hybrid itu tidak ada anu apa namanya tidak ada lampu yang kedip-kedip. Jadi di level end scan itu kebanyakan mereka mainnya di structured light kecuali untuk yang HX ya HX itu kan laser base ya jadi di apa namanya di tengah-tengah itu end scan yang ada dua macam kalau nggak anu ya H sama yang Pro 2 X dan teman-temannya Pro HD dan teman-temannya ya mereka itu di level untuk nge nyeken barang-barang cukup besar ya khusus untuk HX karena dia bisa nyeken manusia tanpa menggunakan mode structured light Structured light itu dia mengeluarkan lampu dan kadang-kadang kedip-kedip. Nah kalau matanya orang kan susah ya, kalau suruh ngadep lampu kedip-kedip kan matanya juga ngedip. Jadi ya 
Jadi nggak bisa di scan. Orang-orang kalau di scan itu biasanya matanya nutup semua. Nah, kecuali kalau kita pakai seri H. Nah, seri H itu bisa ngeprint apa scan eh, manusia, termasuk juga sering dipakai untuk apa namanya um, dipakai untuk ini uh, prostetik. Jadi kan pada waktu kita nyekan prostetik biasanya kan um, sumber aslinya kan dari iter tangan atau kaki manusia asli di scan. Nah ke- makanya kemudian banyak yang dipakai H itu adalah untuk itu. Jadi untuk prostetik, untuk barang besar kayak apa namanya kayak sofa dan segala macam. Nah itu bisa dipakai buat itu. Begitu kita naik ke H. X atau Pro ini ceritanya adalah barang-barang besar yang um, apa namanya uh, kadang-kadang kita juga perlunya di outdoor ya jadi outdoor itu problemnya adalah structure light itu kan ah itu musuhnya adalah kalau terlalu terang juga susah dia ngelihatnya kan jadi jadi dia memang uh, diperlukan paling banyak ya untuk AX itu adalah untuk uh, scan barang-barang ini barang-barang untuk produk desain. Ya, produk desain dan kemudian untuk preservasi. Jadi um, ada alasan kenapa kok Pro 2X sama HD itu banyak dipakai karena dia bisa scan tanpa marker un, uh, high res. Jadi kalau barangnya itu misalnya gini patung gede tapi nggak boleh ditempel-tempeli marker kan repot ya. Nah, kalau ditempeli marker kan nanti bisa rusak aduh patungnya. Jadi ya kita pakai itu. Oke ini lihau lagi restart kali ya kok menghilang. Ya, rasanya dia lagi restart. Nah, uh, Andrea, are you there? Oh, he's coming now. Ya. Yeah. Okay, just start. Restart just restart semua ya. again. Yeah. Lampu mati BE di Cina. <laughs> Andrea. Nah, yang uh, yet I check it, Andrea. Ya, yeah. jadi yang paling tinggi adalah seri HX. Nah, HX ini dia kan laser base ya. Nah, laser base itu memang salah, ada tiga memang kombinasinya. Uh, scanner-scanner itu, laser itu, dia tergantung sama wavelength-nya. Jadi, di antara 400 sampai 700 nano, itu dia, kita, apa namanya, uh, ngatur ya. Jadi, kita tuh mau pakai merah yang paling rendah, hijau yang paling umum dan paling kuat, paling jauh, atau biru yang paling akurat. Dan biru ini karena karena apa namanya warnanya biru ya, lightingnya biru. Dia itu yang paling bagus untuk apa? Untuk handle barang gelap atau barang shiny. Ya jadi kalau uh, larinya lebih banyak ke metal object, terus apa namanya um, lari ke apa nama reverse engineering yang butuh akurasi agak tinggi itu kita pakainya HX. Jadi di level itu. Um, sampai prototyping ya mereka sampingnya di situ. Ah, di satu share the screen again. We how yeah. you there? Andre nanti kalau <laughs> ini ya, ke bagian dongeng kalau misalnya. Iya bagian sambil. dongeng <laughs> sambil menunggu ya. Ya. Nah, Shiny 3D itu juga nggak apa cuma sampai sana. Mereka juga ada yang masuk ke dental, terus masuk ke metrologi scanner. Ya, jadi kalau dental itu memang anu ya. Jadi modelnya dari interaural scan sampai ke 3D printing itu mereka khusus untuk nge-scan barang-barang kecil. Nah, di dental itu itu juga termasuk jewelry. Jadi produknya namanya Spark. Nah, pada waktu anu kita ngomong jewelry, jewelry itu masih ingat tadi ya. Kalau merah paling bawah, hijau paling di tengah, biru yang paling anu apa namanya uh, bagus untuk uh, akurasi. Jadi untuk dental dan jewelry biasanya mereka juga anu apa namanya uh, pakainya ini uh, blue light. Ya. Jadi blue light itu kalau begitu scannernya warnanya blue Bapak Ibu mesti hati-hati karena apa itu biasanya paling mahal karena harus akurasi paling tinggi. Kasarnya gitu. Jangan lupa dicatat nanti ada ada itu tuh, ada kuisnya itu. Kuisnya kan bukan anu kan tentang aku dongeng kan. Kuisnya tentang dia yang dongeng dong. <laughs> Oke, okay, uh, kita coba ya, kita tes mic dengan Lihau. Lihau, are you there? I still cannot hear you. Andrea, maybe you can talk to him.
Yeah. Wow. Still, but uh, I off my mic because there is a dog barking. <laughs> Yes, jadi uh, apa namanya tadi pada waktu kita lihat bahwa apa namanya um, lain lagi yang metrologi. Nah, metrologi itu memang yang khusus ya. Memang uh, kita ngomong kalau kalau scanner 3D itu yang high end, yang harganya sudah ngomongnya sudah hampir M atau lebih dari M, satu M, 2 M, nah itu biasanya masuk kategorinya yang meteorologi scanner. Ya, jadi populasinya agak banyak meteorologi scanner, ya karena harganya itu. Dan umumnya base-nya adalah laser untuk barang besar dan apa namanya structured light blue untuk barang kecil. Itu yang kita kalau pakainya um, meteorologi scanner. Dan tentu aja um, ada juga beberapa barang pendukung ya, misalnya salah satunya gini. Konsep misalnya kalau saya disuruh harus ngeken mobil penuh. Nah ini. Halo. Halo. Oh. Is that okay? Kita. I saw the new camera, Madoka Yuan. Is that your colleague, Andrea? You can hear me now? Yes, I hear you, Li Hao. Welcome back. Uh, I, I was trying to use my phone as the microphone. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, Pak Andre. Okay. No more voice. It's silent again. I don't know. <laughs> Not okay. Sure. Uh, not sure. Not sure what's the problem is. Yes, I think it's the connection is bad or they changing the webinar because they did you say because he's at Taiwan. Hello? <laughs> so um, that's why I'm not changing the video. I think I think it sure works now. Oh, okay. It's good right. Now. Good. Right. Welcome back. <laughs> Sorry for making you guys waiting. Yes, Andre, um, tell the story about sending scanner or sending scanner already. <laughs> you can go ahead. All right. Uh, let's start from this this case. Okay. So uh, we were talking about the reason to to use scanner for reverse engineering um, is that it helps to improve efficiency and accuracy. Okay, and we will uh, use an example to illustrate this. So here we have this broken glasses. It's broken from the middle metal piece, uh, snapped. And due to there's no more uh, spare parts available, uh, the only way to repair this glass is to um, do reverse engineering and make a replicate of this middle metal piece, okay? And here's our uh, two different ways to do it. So for the old ways, we will try to uh, measure the parts and uh, we will uh, use either like rulers or other uh, measuring tools to, to measure this broken piece. Um, the old ways, there are a lot of limitation. First is there's a lot of errors based on what, are to, what tools you are using. And um, there are different surfaces that which is hard to measure. For example, for the um, middle uh, free surfaces, it's really hard to measure the size of it. Then um, based on the measurement, we will try to design in the software or just make a test piece based on the measurement. And due to manufacturing arrows and the measuring arrows, um, there's high possibility that the, the first iteration parts will not fit uh, into the, with the other uh, parts. Then we have to do this iterations more time and time 
uh, for a couple circles to get a final uh, working piece. And this will take us a long time. And with scanning technology, uh, we can actually scan the parts really fast and we can design based on the scan data. Um, since we already have the scan data as a reference and the scanner itself is more accurate than rulers, uh, it will take, it will one, take one, one to two, two iterations, iterations to get a, get a good working a piece. Working piece. And here and in here this in case, this case uh, we, uh, we use solid H, H to, to do reverse engineering and, and get the, get the uh, reverse engineering model. model. And we use uh, metal printers to print out the piece. And uh, we code it with a uh, golden coat and mounted back. And you can see on the screen is what we have finally. And this will, so using scan data will help you to uh, significantly reduce the full reverse engineering process time. And we have uh, more cases here. Uh, first, this one is car body modification. So we have this um, Mustang and uh, we use scanner to scan the side of it. You can see on the screen is the scan data for the original car. Then uh, based on the original data, we do reverse, reverse engineering and uh, design a wide body kit of it. Then we print it out and mount it uh, to the car. And here you can see uh, on the left is the final um, data. Uh, the final outcome. And uh, another case uh, for, this is from a speed lab racing car. Um, they are uh, a race car company that they build uh, cars for uh, some famous racing uh, competitions. And the their problem is all the car's body were hand, was handmade it and for aerodynamic reasons. And they don't have a digital copy of it. So every time if the, if the body, car body was damaged or uh, they need spare parts, they have to uh, rebuild the, the whole thing uh, with hand again. So we help them to scan the car and uh, do reverse engineering to get a digital copy of the car body. Uh, help them to in future repairation and uh, manufacturing. And now let's get to the second question is, uh, how to do reverse rendering with scan data. Uh, solid, uh, Shining 3D provided uh, two softwares which are useful for reverse engineering. One is called uh, Geometric Essentials, which is made by uh, 3D System. Uh, this, this software is kind of like a bridge between uh, scan data and uh, a normal CAD software. So you can uh, add a mesh and extract features out of it with essentials. Then the other one is called Solid H, which is from uh, made by Siemens. This one is actually a, a pretty mature CAD software, but Siemens adds in a, a reverse engineering model into it, so you can. Uh, do reverse engineering with this uh, design software. Okay, and let's see how we can do it. So the basic process for reverse engineering with two, these two software are, uh, I divided into four steps. First one will be preparing raw data. Of course, you have to scan the object first to get the data. 
and then we prepare the raw data. And second, we will generate reference based on the data. Then we design with the reference and the final step will be output. And let's see how we're gonna do uh, for the prepare raw data step. And uh, with geometric essentials, uh, to prepare raw data, we have a lot of different functions. Uh, first, we have these mesh editing functions. The mesh doctor uh, is quite useful to repair the mesh if you have um, if you have a poor scan data. Sometimes, most of the times, uh, our scanner should give you a good scan data. But if you have for scan data, a mesh doctor will help you to repair the mesh, um, to delete all the small spikes. Then we also have smooth functions, uh, help you to improve the surface condition. And we have the hole filling functions, uh, will help your utility to fill all the holes on the mesh. Then we also have this uh, align data function, which um, may sound weird for you, but it's actually very useful in the reverse engineering process. Um, the reason why we want to do aligning for the scan data is, uh, you know, the scan data itself is actually uh, floating around in the 3D space. Uh, because when you scan the data, um, the XYZ direction was set up based on your first scan. And well, there's high possibility that the scan data is, is not uh, aligned. Even if you like scan a, a pure box, it's, it might be uh, floating in the space with a weird direction. Then these align data functions will help you to align the data uh, with the global coordinate system. And uh, with the aligning, you will be able to have more reference for the uh, future design process, like for example, the XYZ uh, axis and the uh, three uh, planes will help you to have more reference for future design. Then with solid age, uh, we actually have some similar functions. Um, you can see uh, we have functions like mesh cleanup functions, like we can smooth mesh. You can fill holes. And we also have a geometry inspector. This one function like the uh, mesh doctor in solid age, uh, in the uh, geometric essentials. It will help you to clean the mesh and fix all the fails. And we also are able to align data and uh, to, to move the data in, in space with solid age. Okay. After um, you clean the mesh and align the data, uh, the next step will be uh, generate the reference. And same, uh, in Geometric Essentials, the software provide a lot of different functions to um, create features. Um, usually, CAD software cannot make use of the scan data directly because you know the scan data are a mesh file as it's small triangle surfaces and the the cat software need um let's say uh, planes and cylinders there are all uh, more regulated shapes and we have to uh, create features based on the uh, scan data for example, um, if we scan a plane, uh, it's the scan data itself is our small uh, triangle surfaces, and the software will help us to um, fit a pure plane based on the scan data, which will help in uh, future design. And also, uh, besides of creating features, we can also uh, do outer surf surfacing. This will help you to extract uh, unique surfaces like um, 
create a special lines surfaces. Um, and these surfaces can be used as reference for designing uh, in the CAD software. And for solid, we can do the same thing. Uh, we have, let's say we have this automatic uh, region divide functions, which the software will automatically detect uh, different areas with different features. Like for example, uh, other planes will be recognized with yellow. And then after the uh, features are recognized, you can extract, use extract functions to uh, fit different features onto it. Like you can see on the screens, uh, all the planes are being fitted and placed. Okay, so uh, these features and surfaces are the reference which will help a lot, a lot for us to finally generate a, a design body. And so the search step will be designed based on the reference. Uh, from these steps, we are, since we are doing uh, CAD designing work, um, Geometric Essential don't have uh, functions on, on this step and we were using solid age only. And here you can see we have uh, different surface editing functions. Like for example, uh, after we have the uh, fitted plane from uh, last step, we can extend them uh, to make sure we have a full enclosed uh, area. Then we will use this uh, intersect functions. It will help us to um, trim this, these surfaces and form a, a solid body out of it. And you can see on the screen, the software will trim the surface automatically and give you a solid body. And uh, next with this solid body, you can do uh, other uh, CAD features, uh, you can add other CAD features onto it. Uh, you can do like adding a hole or you can do round it to the object, okay? And the final step uh, will be output. Um, you can do many things with the reverse engineering model. Like I said before, um, for the glass cases, we uh, use the, the final CAD model to print out a metal piece for repair. And in other cases, like the car body kit case, uh, we use the reverse engineering data to help designing the wide body kit. So you can use the reverse engineering model for further designing. And here, let's see uh, more cases of reverse engineering. Uh, we have two more here. One is a customized face mask. This one was made uh, last year uh, during the, the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, we customized the, the face mask based on the face scans. The other one is more uh, industrial, it's optimizing an aircraft bracket. Okay. So this one is aircraft bracket optimizations.
we would try try to optimize this design. So we scan the the old design first to to get a, a mesh data. Then uh, we're going to use solid age for the reverse engineering process. This, uh, this outlines was cut it from the uh, scan data using solid age. And here we are uh, trying to fit the upper surface. You can see that we can fit three surfaces. The scan data is a really good reference when you were doing uh, designs. The standard will help you to uh, locate features and um, to decide their sizes more quickly. And here we come to CAD data. And Solid Edge is actually capable for uh, doing uh, simulations. This is a, a stress simulation. And using a software, you can uh, optimize the, optimize your um, design with simulation. It will help to uh, reduce material and weight. And here is another case, it's the face mask. So first we just scan the face first. And we imported the uh, scan data into SolidH and use it as a reference to, to make a customized face mask. It will fit your face perfectly.
Um, there are a lot of different cases that you can do, uh, different things you can do with reverse engineering. And like I said in the beginning is that today is just a brief introduction of how the full process looks like and uh, give you an idea of what this reverse engineering with scanner and software can help you, can improve your designing process. Um, if you want to have more idea and want to learn more about reverse engineering, about these two uh, software and also about the scanner, uh, you can find more uh, tutorial videos on Shiny 3D YouTube channel. And also there are um, introduction video for the scanner and for these two software. Um, Yep, this is my part. Uh, any questions you can ask. Okay. Okay, thank you, Li Hao. Menarik sekali ya informasi mengenai scanner 3D dan reverse engineering. Okay, langsung saja kita buka sesi Q&A. Li Hao, we will continue to question and answer session. We will help you to transfer it if necessary. Dalam sesi Q&A, Bapak Ibu boleh menggunakan bahasa Indonesia dan pihak Kiratek nanti akan membantu untuk menerjemahkan waktu dan tempat kami persilahkan. Silakan Bapak Ibu. So, question your interest is welcome. Apakah ada pertanyaan? Silakan Bapak Ibu mumpung bisa bertanya bebas. Bisikan ke mute. Mau bertanya? Oh ya silakan Pak Heri. Nah, kalau seandainya uh, kita sudah scan seperti itu, apakah kita perlu edit lagi di CAD tadi, software CAD tadi atau di software yang lain? Uh, sorry. It seems the voice is now quite. Uh, Pak Heru bisa diulang lagi pertanyaannya tadi suaranya kurang jelas Pak. Bisa diedit lagi apa Pak tadi? Kalau kita selesai scan ya kita selesai scan, apakah kita perlu edit lagi objek tersebut? Oh, atau bisa langsung? Ya. Yeah. Uh, so the question is if they finish the scanning. Do they need to do the editing or revise something or just direct to the file? Yeah, it I cannot internet. hear you. The internet is down. Maybe Andre or Mark can help us. Lihau, you there? Uh, Andre. Yes. Uh, um, so, for the scanning, um, you don't really need to prepare a lot of things. It's based on what you want to scan. Uh, for example, uh, there, there are surfaces which are hard to scan. For example, um, the glasses, which are reflective or um, some of the things like mirrors, it will be very hard to scan and you need to prepare the object with uh, spring powders onto it to make it more easy for scanning. And uh, for the uh, scan data uh, preparation after it. Uh, I think we already talked it in the software to prepare the raw data. 
it based on your uh, use of the data, if you just, for example, if you scan a human body and you want to print it out, use a 3D printer, of course, you have to um, make sure the full body is watertight so that you can do printing. And you might also need to uh, cut the, the bottom side so the printout statue can stand on the table, things like that. But sometimes, for example, if you only want to uh, say we want to measuring a surface, see if it's flat enough, or uh, I want to do uh, other uh, measurement for metal pieces, uh, we only need to scan the data and output a point cloud and it's good enough for measuring, then there's no more uh, post-process you need to do to the scan data. Okay. Thank you, Li Hao. Mila, can you translate? I'm still doing something. Yeah, there's one question from Pak Fadil in the chat box. Is, is, is asking about the depth of laser. How, how accurate is the depth of a laser? I mean, I don't know what he's, going, uh, he's trying to say, but... So, Li Hao, so... <clears throat> If I did uh, ask the group that the chat group, yeah, but I'm not really sure how is uh, how what it meant. <laughs> how uh, how depth is the laser? Uh, how is the depth accuracy of the laser? Is that is that correct, Papa Dil? Andre, tolong. Yeah, uh, jadi begini. Saya tanya itu kedalaman tiap laser, apakah laser itu sebagai, kan tadi kan ada dua warna di lasernya. Apakah itu laser pertama sebagai pengirim data, atau data laser kedua sebagai pembanding atau penerima data. Dan itu berapa kedalamannya, misalnya seperti itu. Oh, anu Pak, bukan Pak. Tadi yang saya cerita tentang laser yang merah, hijau, dan biru itu adalah tipe laser. Jadi ada yang operate dengan apa namanya beberapa wavelength, tapi ada yang operate cuma satu wavelength. Nah, yang di apa namanya di HX itu dia operate cuma satu wavelength which is blue. So, <tuh> so jadi tidak ada anunya, Pak, enggak ada gak ada fungsinya. Jadi memang dia langsung enggak ada yang ngirim data dan enggak ada yang banding karena cuma satu lasernya. Right, so um, <clears throat> so Li Hao. <clears throat> um, yes. Yes. Uh, before we actually the um, uh, talking about the different wavelength of the laser itself, right? So the the SX is actually a blue laser, right? So somebody is asking is, what is the difference between a green laser and a blue laser? Can you collaborate on that? And why A6 is using blue laser? Okay, you mean why, why we use blue color or yes. why we're using laser? Because it's different things. Um, the reason to using blue colors is that um, actually blue light is rare in the environment so you you don't have that much uh, interfere from the environment light if you're using blue laser or blue light to do scanning and the reason why we want to use laser as the light source is that the laser itself is uh, strong enough uh, strong more strong than the uh, normal uh, LED light so you can um, help you to scan some surfaces which are hard to scan. For example, if you want to scan something black, um, if you use a normal LED light scanner, uh, it might hard to acquire data from it. 
But if you use, use laser light scanner, that will easy for you to scan dark objects. So blue laser, it's a good combination. You can both uh, scan dark surfaces with uh, less environment light uh, interference. Okay. Oh, that's just one question from Stephen. He say that why is the model is scan uh, slanted? Not sure what he's talking about. Uh, Stephen, can you elaborate on that, uh, Stephen? Um, sorry, I was late joining. <clears throat> but um, can the table be, uh, tilt? I mean, like I might have used to leave the Lubang Lubang Hitu. So if there's a, a complex uh, model, um, like I might have leave it to the Lubang and the Dalam and one line. Can I? And so I leave it the table leader Buddha Buddha Sego. Oh, you mean the the round table, the rotating yes. table? Is that it? Yes. Yeah. Why there's a there's a, a pattern on it, like um, smart something like a marker? Is that is that correct? Um, no, I was just wondering how can the laser see inside holes? I mean, you don't have to. Uh, oh, okay, okay. How the laser can see the inside of the model without actually um tilt the model right so 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 basically is uh, if you want to scan something it's very good to have a perpendicular you know um sides so it's something like this if you want to uh, scan a wall then you need your scanner to be the same on the same plane with the wall it's easy right so when you try to scan something it's, uh, you tended to follow the contour of the model, right? Yes. You've, right? And then the, what called the, the marker is actually helping us to do a registration process. So that's mean that we know where is the marker relative to the 3D space. So it's, uh, it's, it's making us. Uh, it's making the system to understand where the part is in the model, actually. So the marker is going to help us to fix the point in the three D space. And then when we scan, we usually scan um, following the contour of the model. Is that correct, Li Hao? Yes, um, the marker is used for alignment. So it helps you to um, align different frames of data together. So Stephen, is that uh, um, answer your question? Yes, thank you. Yes. Right. Thank you. What else can we have here? Andre? Yes. Tadi Pak Heru dan Pak Fadil yang open mic dalam bahasa Inggris dijelasin. Kalau ada pertanyaan lagi, mungkin perlu dibantu terjemahan jawabannya. You already done that. Oke. Okay. Pak Heru sudah beres ya? Yes, I think so. <laughs> Pak Heru, itu dia open mic. Yes, I think so. <laughs> Oke, okay, Pak. Thank you. Ada pertanyaan lain? Ada lagi. Silakan, Pak. Ya. Nah, kalau kita scan itu, apakah ukurannya itu sangat-sangat detail sesuai dengan originalnya? Um, saya mau tanya dulu, Pak. Uh, yang di scan itu barang barang apa? Ya, macam-macam. Misalnya contoh uh, seperti mos atau uh, koknya mesin dan sebagainya itu oh, okay, okay, okay. sesuai dengan yes. ukuran nggak ukurannya sama nggak berapa inci atau berapa senti gitu sesuai so, dengan originalnya so Liao so the general ask if if you scan something right let's say you scan a mouse or something or or any object right did the scanner measurement will 
exactly match the model. Let's say if I scan one by one by one centimeter or whatever, right? If the data will show one by one by one centimeter also. Can you elaborate on that? Um, there are arrows for the scanner, of course. Um, the accuracy is um, based on many different things. Uh, first, uh, depends on what scanning mode you are using. Um, usually, fixed scan gives you a good uh, accuracy. For example, if you uh, you are scanning something like a mouse, which are which is small, and you want a good uh, accurate, then uh, we recommend you to use uh, fixed scan, fixed scan mode. Uh, it will give you accuracy up to um, 0.17 millimeter for for a single scan. So um, it's it will not give you the the pure um, size, but the accuracy is quite good if you use a fixed scan. Then uh, for the handheld mode, for example, you are scanning something large, like a human, um, the accuracy will be uh, lower because there are arrows when you um, aligning different scans together. So uh, for example, if you scan human, the accuracy will be somewhere like 0.1 millimeter every meters, things like that. So the, the larger the object you scan, the larger the arrow will be. And if you wanna know the uh, exact number of it, uh, I recommend you go, go to our website, uh, the einscan.com, and you can see all the specifications for our different scanners and we list their accuracy on the website and you can choose the um, right scanner based on your accuracy requirement. Okay, there's, um, there's another question uh, from Steven. <clears throat> He's asking how far from the model the scan can be performed. It means that um, how far the scanner head is actually positioned to scan the model. But this is 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 not uh, talking about a specific scanner. Okay, um, the distance varies from models to models. Um, usually. It will be around three to 500. Two uh, X plus series, there are uh, 500 and two X is around uh, 400 millimeters. Um, you, can, you can see from the, uh, also on our website, we list all the working distance. Um, usually it's, it's like 300 to 500 based on what model you were choosing. Oh, and Pat Steven, uh, there's also uh, indication on this, uh, the scanner head actually. So the scanner head, they usually they have a, a light indication that when it's green, it means that it's a, it's a optimum distance. And then when it's not green, like red or blue, it means that it's, we are going too, uh, too far or either too near. Is that uh, answer a question? Yes. But, you know, I'm sorry, I was like joining, so I missed it. So I think it should be custom. Ah, sure, sure. No problem. So, any other question then? Ada pertanyaan lain?
Um, actually, there's one. Uh, Par Parvianto par <laughs> say that um, the solver is is worth millions. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, Mark. Mark. Hi, Li Hao. This is Mark. Hey, I want to ask you, Li Hao, if um, the scanner can perform uh, under what sort of light condition? I know that sunlight is a challenge for most scanner. Uh, how about um, how dim or how bright must a room be uh, before we set up the scanner? Thank you. Optimum lighting condition for scanning. Um, actually, our normal room light condition, I think it's the best light condition for scanning. Um, so like in the office light uh, with normal room light, on top is good enough for uh, scanning itself. Um, extreme bright environment, like if you scan outdoors, uh, for some of the models, it's possible. For example, if you're using blue laser light, it's possible to scan uh, under sunlight. Uh, and also for Pro HD and 2X 2020, um, it's we, we tested it before then, and it's possible to scan under sunlight. Um, although the results may not be so good as the uh, normal room light condition, but it's possible. But for some other models like SESPs, it's not possible to scan uh, under strong light. Then um, for dark environment, um, it depends on what kind of data you're looking for. Um, during uh, in the in the dark environment, it's possible to to get the shape of the object. So the three D data can be scanned pretty well because you know the the project itself uh, provide the light pattern, and also there are LED lights around the cameras to uh, add um, more light. But if you were looking for a good texture, so you want the color of the object, then if you were scanning in a dark area, in dark environment, the texture data itself might be uh, a little bit dark. So if you were scanning something in color, I recommend you to do it in a normal uh, room light condition. So Mark, is that, uh, answer your question? Uh, yeah. Hey, Nihal, just want to add. Uh, we we think sometimes we need to bring additional lights. Is that right? Uh, for the, for indoor setting? Uh, um, you don't need additional light if you were scanning indoor condition. Um, if you want good texture, uh, mm. I don't recommend you scan in dark room. But if you don't want texture, uh, mm. Darkroom will give you good scan data too. Mm. Okay. okay. So Mark, you can um, tell Li Hao that you are using Pro 2X, right? <laughs> Trying out, yeah. Uh, we, we have one project uh, that we need to scan some artifacts to try. and then um, But the artifacts are not able to remove from the glass frame. So honestly, we have a very difficult time trying to benchmark that. Uh, any recommendation? Uh, I don't know if you have similar cases like that. Um, you mean the object is, is inside a glass boxes, right? That's right. Um, as far as I know, if the glass is clear enough, you can just directly scan it um, as long as uh, the glass box is not so large that the scanner cannot focus on the object surfaces. Okay. Mm, we yeah. have tried to, to scan foot, uh, mm. the back of the foot through a piece of glasses and it's working pretty well. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, try to clear, clean the glass before you scan and it should work and uh, try to, to scan perpendicular to the glass. 
Okay. And but if you have further questions, you can uh, you can send emails to to our email box. I think Andrew will give you the email, and uh, we can help you to give you more advice uh, through email. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, uh, yeah. The question keep coming. <laughs> Wait. Um. Okay. Text. Yeah. Uh, from Heitzar, I think I. Heitzar Nur Kaisa. Yeah. Um. I'm not sure he's a he or she, but. Is he? Yeah. Um. I'm gonna I'm gonna answer in Indonesian anyway. But um. <clears throat> jadi Pak Heitzar ya Pak ya. Jadi objek yang apa namanya di scan itu bisa keluar warnanya kalau kita set uh, kameranya Pak. Jadi pada waktu dia scan, scan itu dia uh, dua macam Pak. Satu dia scan untuk ngambil point cloud dari model, dan yang kedua dia untuk ngambil uh, tekstur dari model. Jadi kalau pada waktu kita scan apa namanya um, biasanya di setting scannernya itu bisa di set apakah saya cuma mau ngambil modelnya aja atau saya mau mengambil model dan teksturnya jadi kalau saya mau ngambil model dan teksturnya saya akan aktifkan fitur kameranya dinyalakan supaya kita bisa nyeken teksturnya ya jadi uh, setelah teksturnya dapat teksturnya nanti di uh, diposisikan di poin-poin uh, uh, cloudnya itu tadi jadi supaya bisa nempel, gitu ya. Um, kalau ada scan masih ada surface yang lubang-lubang, iya pak perlu diedit pak. Um, software cuman bisa ngedit apa namanya um, otomatis cuman anu pak nggak apa nggak terlalu akurat biasanya. Jadi kalau saya harus apa namanya ngedit ya biasanya ya kita edit tinggal tergantung modelnya. Jadi kalau misalnya modelnya manusia gitu ya, kita mungkin ngedit softwarenya pakai software anu apa namanya kayak Zebra seperti gitu gitu. Nah tapi kalau untuk yang engineering biasanya kalau lubang-lubang saya nggak terlalu bingung sama lubang-lubangnya pak, karena toh kita rebuild dari ulang. Terus um, ada lagi ya.